Fashion Tech Alliance involves higher educational institutions, small, medium and big enterprises and the research center. This project has been co-founded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union and is aimed to facilitate knowledge exchange between partners and to design and pilot learning experiences to engage students in a Fashion Tech Residency program, embedding young talents in the company's innovation activities. A central objective of the project is to design multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary and intersectoral learning activities involving international students from five European universities. The contents of the lectures have been specifically created to match the needs of fashion tech learning. They have become open educational resources to allow future engagement between a European-wide fashion and textile HEI community and are available under Creative Commons Sharealike 4.0 with the aim of a wide and free distribution, access, use and reuse. Ready to learn more about fashion tech? Enjoy the lecture! Hi, my name is Livia Tenuta and I'm Assistant Professor at the Design Department of Politecnico di Milano. My research is dedicated to future scenarios and innovation profession, focusing in particular on wearable accessories. Hi, I'm Susanna Testa and I am assistant professor at the design department of the Politecnico di Milano and my research focuses on interaction and technological innovation for the fashion sector. The content of this lecture is divided into the impact of digital revolution on the fashion system, hypercraft advanced tools to design and produce, second skin augmented and interactive body equipment, mixed realities, design enhanced user experiences. But let's start with the impact of digital revolution on the fashion system. So the aim of this section is to understand how the digital revolution affected the world of fashion. Over the years, fashion and technological inventions have often come to collide, growing closer and contaminating one another in attempts at compensating for each other's limits. This process of hybridization has opened up new possibilities for fashion in terms of innovation in products and processes, improvement of service performances, and interaction by users. But what brought fashion and technology closer together? So the Industrial Revolution marked the transition from handmade crafting to new models of production processes. So manual expertise was gradually compounded and in some sectors replaced by the use of machine tools with significant improvements in terms of quality, speed and production efficiency. In the 1970s, with the birth of computers, industrial machines made way for intangible goods with the shift from hardware to software. By this point, the revolution of information technology was no longer the domain of only academic and scientific researchers. Also, in the fashion sector, industrial machines were beginning to be used to design and color garments, and the first brand websites appeared. Subsequently, the 1990s were the years of the internet. The web was increasingly seen by brands as a tool to advertise products and spread the content. Democratization and widespread access to technology led to a significant reduction in costs and to the shift towards what is called the new economy that produced a demand for technological innovation and optimism about technology-driven progress. Another great uh, revolution hit the first decade of our century, the birth of social networks, uh, along with what uh, Professor Henry Jenkins has defined participatory culture. They soon became a communication tool for fashion, as well as fashion blogs and e-commerce platforms to sell products online. Let's just think about, for example, Ux. So from design to retail, from product to communication, the results of the merger between fashion and digital technologies 
concern all stages of the production process, improving them and making them quicker and more efficient. So the fashion tech sector is a special disciplinary niche in the contemporary world, as it is marked by elements which are unprecedented in the history in terms of revolutionary impact. Indeed, the digital technologies have wholly pervaded the fashion system and its processes and products, have altered the DNA of traditional paradigms, and lastly, have changed the role of actors involved. As stated in the benchmarking report, Edu for Fashion Tech, the nature of fashion tech is a fragmented, disjointed realities with various and heterogeneous professionals. Trends, disciplines, products, competences, methodologies, and applications. Indeed, the terminological pair fashion technology is nowadays employed to describe a wide and varied section of the contemporary world, which range from e-commerce to blogging to various types of wearable technology. The very word that designates this discipline highlights its hybrid nature, through its linked reference to fashion and technology. Moreover, it covers an extremely frag fragmented context which brings together disciplines, professionals, skills, methodology from the most uh, diverse backgrounds. So given, given this complexity, it is therefore useful uh, to clarify not only the disciplines concerning fashion tech, but also the typology of products and services that define this field. Starting uh, with the disciplines, fashion tech uh, includes um, firstly design, including fashion design, industrial design, communication design, user experience design, and generative design. Secondly, natural sciences and engineering that involve uh, the skills associated with electronics, textile, biomedical and IT engineering, as well as those relating to chemistry and biology. Economics, management and marketing, which cover the activities playing a crucial role within the overall chain of production. Then anthropology and psychology, that investigates the relationship between human behavior and the environment. And lastly, neurosciences, that focus on the analysis of the psychic functions involved in all human sensorial, perceptual, and emotional experiences. All of these broad disciplinary areas interact and supplement one another in a process which bears directly on the methodology and skills required from the professionals involved, as well as on the tools employed. Just as the various disciplines which define fashion tech are intrinsically hybrid, so are as well the resulting varied products associated with this sector, which bring together a digital experience and the wearer's body. In particular, it is possible to subdivide this sector into three main areas. Two of these refer to specific product categories, which are wearables and smart materials, while the last designates those products which are obtained through a well-defined process, digital manufacturing. So wearables are products which may be worn and which have been designated to favor new levels of communication interaction through the use of integrated digital and virtual technologies aimed at enhancing the capabilities of the human body. Thus, wear may establish a deeper dialogue with its own body, with other people, with other objects, and with the environment at large. Smart materials have been uh, devised to react to external stimuli of mechanical, thermal, chemical, biological, magnetic, or electric nature by means of advanced physical and digital technologies. Digital manufacturing instead is based on an integrated approach to production which relies on a computational system employing 3D technology, robotics, artificial intelligence, and augmented reality. 
The system also integrates various digital technologies aimed at production processes and the resorts to digital technologies embedded in products and services. To conclude, we have seen that fashion tech refers to the application of digital technology to the fashion industry. And this opens up three main scenarios that will be described in the following lessons. Hypercraft, second skin, and mixed realities. Hypercraft, advanced tools to design and produce. The aim of this second part is to give a better understanding of what Hypercraft is. In particular, it includes all the technologies that are applied in fashion for design and production phases. From the 2000s, the digital third dimension has been entering and affecting the stages of garment design, production, sizing, testing and communicating. What was once made on paper through collage, drawings, prints or fitting directly on the mannequin today happens in the virtual dimension on screen in a simple and effective manner. Designing today requires not only to have the creativity and methods to do so, but also to know how to use the right tools. Specifically, during this part, we will talk about 3D modeling programs, virtual prototyping, 3D printing, and the birth of prosumers. In the fashion field, an increasing number of specific software for garments and accessories has been developed. The software dedicated to garments, such as, for example, Clo3D, transformed to the to the drawings into realistic 3D patterns, creating virtual prototypes to test wearability, color variations, and materials. In regards to accessories and jewelry instead, we can mention Rhino Gold and 3 Design, which have a vast library of specific materials. Once the 3D shape is created, it is possible to digitally modify its aesthetic, changing proportions and colors. What is more, in this way, garments and accessories can be virtually tested, even in their intangible stage. This is made possible by virtual prototyping, which allows the user to directly interact with the digital product as if it was physical. The shape, look, and physical behavior can be defined and the specifics of the product subsequently obtained. Moreover, the designer is able to interact with it, test its usability, visualize and modify the product in different stages and for different users. The impact of this new testing method not only completely changes the traditional product development cycle from design, build, fix to design, analyze, test, build. It also improves the communication between the parties involved in the product development process, bringing products to the market more quickly with reduced costs and the timescales also, thus facilitating innovation. But virtual prototyping is just one application of 3D modeling. Another one, which is certainly better known and has recently become widespread, is 3D printing, an additive manufacturing process through which an object is built layer after layer, starting from a 3D model. 20 years from its first patent, 3D printing came back in 2005, thanks to the RepLab project, but its real boom was in 2012, when several companies became interested in it. 
the increase in the offer and the greater accessibility of technology caused by the reduction of costs have generated a growing diffusion of 3D printers. The prices have fallen to such an extent that the 3D printer market today is addressed not only to businesses but also to consumers, the so-called digital craftsmen. Digital platforms and the diffusion of new means of production, such as additive manufacturing tools, have democratized the process and revolutionized the role of actors within the supply chain, encouraging an open innovation approach to the creative process. Thanks to the new desktop manufacturing tools, digital artisans have become creators and entrepreneurs managing the entire production process through the web with benefits in terms of time and costs. They integrate technologies to the traditional craft processes, modeling software, algorithmic and computational design, and 3D technologies mold the matter starting from a digital file. The resulting products created ad hoc are often manually finished. The projects are then shared, modified, selected and purchased online directly by the end user. It is the case, for example, of Sunny, which in July 2020 launched uh, Sunny Canvas, a platform for digital customization. Merging reality with the virtual world, the new initiative uh, allows buyers to customize some of the brand's signature pieces that initially arrive in plain white. Sunny Canvas serves garments, a blank canvas where retailers can cater to their audience, building further one-on-one -on -one relationships with the brand. In this context, we are witnessing a transition of the role of the purchaser from passive to active, from consumer to prosumer. In fact, prosumers have the potential possibility to design a product, make it and physically see it in their own hands. Taking part and actively interacting in the process becomes an actual experience for purchasers. In this way, not only can they choose and potentially must produce their own objects, the products are tailor-made, unique, and infinitely customizable. Second Skin Augmented and Interactive Body Equipment. So in this part, uh, we will deal with body equipment as interface and how the shift from analog to digital has affected the interaction between a user and product. So fashion has always acted as the immediate interface with the surrounding environment by constantly communicating and perceiving emotions, experiences and meanings. So by the same token, body equipment becomes a channel through which communicate the multiple meanings and ultimately act as an interface between individual human beings and the rest of the world. So body equipment has always played the function of a second skin, able to perform on one side material functions such as protect, hide and attract, and on the other side cultural functions, producing information about our identity. However, with the digital revolution, even though body equipment still plays the same role of material and cultural interface, the feature of the interactions enabled have become more complex. But how has the interaction changed over time? Experiments on smart materials and the transition from analog to digital have significantly changed the nature and the characteristics on the, of the interaction. 
So we have moved, for example, from a type of experience between user and product that was mainly given by inert analog components. And that was based on voluntary inputs and with mostly visual and tactile outputs to the not always controllable reactivity of smart materials to wearable technologies able to engage all the senses in the interaction, producing quantifiable outputs and with the possibility to collect and exchange data with the system. So given the evolution brought by the transition from analog to digital, it is possible to identify three different systems whereby the equipment plays the role of the interface. These three systems are the linear analog system, the closed circuit dynamic system, and the open circuit dynamic system. Let's start with the first one. Traditional fashion products tend to have two levels of interaction, mostly between user product and product own body. We can define it as a linear analog system in which the product is configured as an interface tool. However, there are particular fashion objects that are conceived with the function of allowing specific interactions. We will call them relational products. The second system is the closed circuit dynamic system. Here, uh, the smart fashion products are able to generate a dialogue, a dynamic closed circuit interaction, thanks to the reactivity of the materials with which they are made of. Lastly, there is the open circuit dyna dynamic system. In fact, digital technologies and the internet have further modified the system, and this turns the product into a process, an interface subject which is reactive, but, uh, trackable in time and space, able to communicate with other interfaces, and moreover, in this system, uh, the user becomes an intermediary. This is an open system whose data resulted by the interaction is sent and stored in the system in a continuous dialogic relationship. What is more, products with embedded technologies can create multiple levels of customization based on voluntary inputs, such as, for example, touch, voice, uh, sounds, or involuntary inputs such as pressure, band, and motion, and may have tangible outputs such as LEDs, electronic wires, uh, e ink displays, thermochromic inks, and or intangible outputs, data and information. In this way, digital technology adds a new meaning to the concept of made to measure and customizable. These products become responsive interactive interfaces that can react to the consumer stimuli, adapting and also evolving with them, as well as producing quantifiable data. So products with embedded technology can become an integral part of the body and can enhance it while originating new kinds of actions and behaviors. This expanded categorization envisages the enhanced human body as the main actor in the system of wide ranging connections. It is especially useful because it emphasizes the importance that wearable technologies have in extending the body and enabling it to perform new interactions in a complex relational system. These definitions nonetheless pay little attention to those aspects linked to sensory experiences. Indeed, the digital technologies enhancement of human perception has led to a new definition of the latter. Some businesses are now moving into this direction and are developing projects to enhance the human being's ability to feel through their senses, such as, for example, the North Sense project developed by the, the Cyborg Nest. But there are also other projects uh, which, for example, avail themselves of these sensory interfaces to generate amplified and immersive experiences for all consumers. 
some link touch with hearing and add a tangible dimension to music, such as, for example, example Mimu gloves. There are also products uh, uh, which associate hearing with sight, like the jacket uh, which Cute Circuit uh, designed for the U2 360 tour. Tesla as well has designed a gaming suit that makes virtual reality perceptible to the touch uh, thanks uh, to haptic technology embedded through the garment. To conclude, in this uh, third section, we have seen that Thanks to the transition from analog to digital and implementation of products with embedded technology, the interaction of the user with the product creates an immersive and engaging experience, strengthening the metaphor of the product as a second skin for the body. Mixed realities design enhanced the user experiences. The aim of this last part is to explore the role of digital technologies applied to communication and immersive experiences in retail to engage with consumers. Today, communication plays a key role in the spread and perception of products, and this is why the world of fashion is constantly searching for increasingly spectacular performances that can enchant and capture the public's attention. Modern consumers have replaced the purchase of finished products with the quest for emotionally gratifying solutions full of meaning. In this scenario, consumer goods are no longer identified with the mere physical uh, ownership, but rather become associated with the personal enrichment which consumer experience within new context. Approaching the project becomes uh, much more complicated as the latter supports an evolving society either through services that establish interpersonal relationships or through communication strategies. In this perspective, for their Four Winter 2016-17 fashion show, Dolce Gabbana invaded the city of Naples for four days, launching a new experience. Fashion shows became no longer elitist and enclosed in a physical space, but apparently open and visible by all. In this context, two main ideas arise. On one side, the mass accessibility, and on the other side, the spectacular elements. Technology is increasingly used for these goals, mainly in fashion shows, through virtual shows and augmented reality, for uh, trying on garments both in shops or digitally, so through fitting rooms and virtual try-on platforms or apps, and uh, social digital experience. In particular, uh, technology in the shape of augmented or virtual reality is the tool for fashion show productions. Virtual reality, known as VR, is a simulated experience that can be similar to or completely different from the real world. Currently, on one side, the standard virtual reality systems use headsets or multi-projected environments to generate realistic images and sounds. An example of this technology's application to fashion retail is the project by Coach that, in cooperation with IMG, Simon Mals, and Facebook, has installed virtual reality devices in its shop in order to offer consumers a democratic access to its latest fashion shows. On the other side, standard virtual reality systems use sensations that simulate a user's physical presence in a virtual environment. 
An example is when Polo Ralph Lauren for its spring summer 2015 projected uh, models in midair above the waters of Central Park Lake, thanks to holographic technology, or for autumn winter 2012, Alfred Daniel staged an impressive holographic installation in Shanghai with 64 models. This time, physical, immersed in a virtual environment that transported the London's Trafalgar Square to Shanghai and projected the changing of the seasons. This type of virtual reality is different from the one defined in 1996 by Mark DeRay as a simulation technology that uses big glasses with integrated displays and quadraphonic sound to immerse users in 3D worlds generated by compu computer graphics. Indeed, the technology today is no longer heavy and bulky. It is light and easy to use, and it involves uh, its user to such an extent that it has become difficult to distinguish virtual reality from the physical one. For its spring-summer 2021 collection, the Italian brand GCDS showed a virtual fashion show format with avatars that crossed the catwalk with the real clothes, a format that will remain in various forms. And with the advent of VR, fashion will be completely transformed. The advent of virtual reality will democratize even such events, usually reserved in their physical version for journalists and VIPs. Virtual reality influencers are also making their wave in fashion. Lil Michaela, Shud Gram, Nonuri, and Lightning are all digitally created, ultra-realistic models taking the fashion world by storm. But virtual reality celebrities emerged back in the late 90s when artist Jamie Ollett and musician Damon Alburn launched their virtual band Gorillaz. The fashion industry says the opportunity and in 2013, Mark Jacobs of Louis Vuitton designed outfits for Atsune Miku, a virtual avatar of a 16-year-old Japanese virtual musician that has collaborations with Lady Gaga and Farrell and performs on stage concerts as an animated hologram. This, of course, opens up major ethical questions in regards on the morality of recurring to virtual influencer broadcasting beauty standards that are unprecedented uh, perfect. Besides uh, virtual reality, we have also to consider uh, augmented reality, known as AR. It is an interactive experience of a real environment where the objects that reside in the physical world are enhanced by computer-generated perceptual information, sometimes across multiple sensory modalities, including visual, auditory, haptic, uh, somatosensories, and olfactory. We find an example of its use with the British luxury brand Maika in collaboration with Olition in presenting their spring summer 2014 during the London Fashion Week. The catwalk was transformed into its digital 3D version that came to life through an ad hoc design solution um, for uh, the brand. Framing a scene with the tablet, models walking with different dresses magically appear. The project is a winner not only because it is new 
and awe inspiring, but also because it is functional to staging the show in different parts of the world by simply moving the scene. Going on in this direction, virtual try-on is the future of clothes and accessory buying. In fact, virtual try-on concepts allow visitors to try on digital products on website pages or in real environments. The realization of this concept supposes to use of different and powerful technologies. It can be processed with models, customer pictures, or video in real time. An example of smart selling is Uniqlo. Uniqlo, in fact, has equipped one of its points of sale with technological mirrors that blend physical and digital reality to offer an enhanced in-store shopping experience. Once um, customers have worn the garment of their choice, they can check various available colors in the mirror, take pictures to be shared via email or on social networks, and have all the relevant uh, product specifications at their disposal. While this innovation in the shops take place in the physical space, we must also take a look at the virtual space that increasingly uh, is the place where new buying dynamics are forming, close to the new generations. This means that future consumers will crowd the real shops less and less as they will increasingly buy on the web. The fashion world has understood this and has responded with the creation of virtual stores in which consumers can buy and try on products. In augmented reality, a level of digital content accessible to users is superimposed onto the physical world. Information in the shape of text, graphics and audio together with other virtual enhancers are used in real time and merged with uh, the physical environment. This specific link to the real world marks the difference between augmented and virtual reality. The former, in fact, completes and adds value to the interaction between users and the physical environment. One of the first luxury brands to take advantage of the potential of this digital marketing strategy was Boucheron, who has been employing it since 2010 to let consumers try on products and visit boutiques through the website. Moreover, technology gives an answer to the need for made-to-measure with 3D scanning, the new frontier of sizing somewhat like a virtual tailor. For instance, GAP has been investigating uh, in virtual reality. Um, the dressing room app was developed by Avametric in 2007 and it employs avatars helping consumers to visualize the product's degree of wearability without uh, having to try them on. Also, Retail Wire in 2017 investigated the actual potential of the dressing room app and the real possibility of replacing or completing the physical uh, dressing room. Several projects uh, arose uh, around this team, not only to give uh, users uh, products uh, that fit perfectly, but also to reduce the returns uh, of uh, items uh, purchased online, which today has the rate of 28%. In fact, uh, reducing returns 
means extending the cycle of clothes. Lastly, as anticipated, today technology is increasingly used to enhance the social digital experience. Today, uh, we may talk about digital wardrobes, uh, even if a jacket, a bag or a pair of sneakers are not real, users can still wear them as Instagram filters in any video, photo or story they post. <clears throat> Some brands are born in the digital environment and evolve as physical collections. It is possible, for example, to simulate brands' products through social media filters, studying the information contained in the simulation, such as engagement, demographics and uh, psychographics eventually producing in real life the products as filters that retain the most appealing metrics. This allows to save a huge amount of natural resources in the process. This is, for example, the case of impossible brands. This model can be referred uh, to as virtual to consumer. It allows to introduce a fast digital fashion made of thousands of virtual products simulated by their digital twins and a slow physical one made of limit, uh, limited uh, data-driven and physical collections. Through virtual reality, uh, customers can become models at the same time. They can parade with the garments they intend to buy and interacting with other customers. They can decide to buy the physical piece or just its virtual version.